anatomy of the lymphatic system, which of course relates to its function. Um, first of all, know that there is lymphatic tissue throughout almost all of your organs that is really important. So when we're talking about structures, I don't think this is, I mean, you can see the vessels, um, but it's not obvious in this picture. There is diffuse lymphatic tissue throughout the body. So just something to remember um, when we talk about the system. Similar to blood vessels, right? Like we have some anatomy of blood vessels, but literally capillaries are in your entire body. Um, nervous system, same thing. So um, the major organs that are kind of more identifiable, um, I'm gonna go over those now. So the first, I'm gonna kind of group them. So the first two are considered primary lymphoid organs. This is the bone marrow. So red bone marrow and the thymus. This is where um, lymphocytes are actually um, differentiate hematopoiesis, just like we saw with the blood lectures and then mature proliferate and there's some selection. So um, lymphocyte differentiation development. Bone marrow is in um, right inside your bones. In adults, that is primarily in the um, epiphyses of long bones. Recall that. So that's the bone marrow. And actually, I'm going to try to color code this. Um, thymus is right here. You saw this. Um, you will see this in, in the rats, but you may have, and actually maybe got it confused for the thyroid gland. It is right above the heart. So we will look at it um, in, in, in the rats again. Make sure you see it's a lot bigger, a lot closer to the heart. It's not on the trachea like the thyroid is. So that's the job of those, those two organs. Um, then we've got, we'll go next to our lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, um, these are filters. So they are going to remove um, debris and pathogens from the lymph. Filter lymph. Um, so, and these are where located throughout the body. You may know you have some, you know, right here that often you can feel when you're sick. Um, once here, actually, sometimes you can. So example of, lymphatic system having an important immune function, right? We are, lymph nodes are part of the vessels, but they have specialized structures that allow them to filter. Um, and some of that histology and information in your textbook about how they do that filter, filtration to be important for immune function as well. And that's why they swell when you are sick or fighting something. Um, spleen, I'm actually the same color. So spleen also filters the lymph. That's one of its main functions. Spleen is right here. You've seen that in, in the rat. Um, the red pulp of the spleen is mostly what filters the lymph. There's also a white pulp in the spleen where immune cells are mounted. So T and B cells, adaptive immunity um, occurs. So I will put that just in a different color here. There's also white pulp where T and B cell um, are activated. Talk a little bit about adaptive immunity later on. Okay, um, now we've got lymph nodules. So different than nodes, my different color here. Um, lymph, lymph or lymphoid nodules are clusters of lymphocytes just in a capsule. So like nodules. And these are located um, various places throughout the body. And 
One example is the tonsils. So the tonsils is a type of lymphoid nodule. Lymphoid nodule. Here's your tonsils, your adenoid actually as well. You know your tonsils swell when you get sick. Um, so involved in mounting an immune response. Um, one other type of lymphoid nodule is malt. And I'm gonna switch to different colors because I'm worried this won't show up here. I'm gonna switch to black. We will see malt when we look at the digestive system. This stands for mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. So these two are actually examples of our diffuse tissue that, that's everywhere, um, slightly larger collections. Um, malt is associated specifically with mucous membranes, just like the name says. So we will see Peyer's patches um, in the intestine. Um, appendix is, is related to this tissue as well. Um, so specifically protection for mucous membranes. Okay, one last thing related to the introduction to lymph. Um, before I talk about the circulation, I actually want to clarify for you. So what we're talking about here is lymph is the green stuff. We've got our blood vessels full of blood and we've got interstitial fluid that is right here. So what's the difference between all those things? Well, we've talked about the composition of blood already, right? It has a whole lot of oxygen, proteins, um, a bunch of nutrients, carries wastes. Lymph doesn't contain all that stuff. So the lymph itself um, is another type of body fluid similar to blood in that in composition, except it is gonna have some key differences because we've, we've transferred waste um, and nutrients with the interstitial fluid. So it's going to be low in oxygen. It's going to be lower in proteins and other nutrients. So what's gonna happen is the blood is flowing throughout the body. We'll talk more about this whole thing. We get to blood vessels. This is capillary filtration right here, getting blood to the interstitial fluids, fluid. I told you 20 liters happens a day. So interstitial fluid is the stuff that the tissues get from the blood, really. Lymph is the same as interstitial fluid, but in a lymph capillary. So it's the interstitial fluid once it's in the vessels. Um, so we, it's kind of like a right transfer of substances. Lymph is the same as blood, except for we lost stuff um, when filtration occurred and picked up wastes as well. So that's a brief overview of, of those differences. Um, in terms of the circulation of the lymphatic system, we've got these lymphatic capillaries. So that's what picks up the interstitial fluid. So diffusion. Then we've got a collection of larger vessels that get larger and larger with nodules as we go. So vessels until eventually it becomes a, so nodes are part of this. Um, lymphatic trunk is the largest vessel that then is going to enter back into the bloodstream. So that's what's happening right here. One set on each side of the body where we go from the trunk, lymphatic trunk, to a vein, the subclavian veins here. And actually these two trunks here are where um, the lymphatic vessels from the entire body drain into. So that's the basics of circulation. 